Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for iOS Today is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Coming up, Georgia Dow from iMore and I get our craft on with DIY cases for iPhones and iPads, plus DRM gate for Apple Music, all that and an app for wine lovers on iOS Today. This episode of iOS Today is brought to you by lynda.com, the online learning platform with over 3,000 on-demand video courses to help you strengthen your business, technology, and creative skills. For a free 10-day trial, visit lynda.com slash iOS Today. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash iOS Today. And by Gazelle, the fast and simple way to sell your used gadgets. Find out what your used iPhone, iPad, and other Apple products are worth at gazelle.com. Welcome back to iOS Today. Leo Laporte is still on vacation, but joining me again today is Georgia Dow from iMore. Welcome, Georgia. Thank you for having me. So you had this excellent idea for us to get our craft on, make some DIY iPhone and iPad cases. So I got my safety goggles got ready. <laughs> my hands are covered in glitter uh, and... I was ready. You said we should use stuff that we found at the dollar store, stuff we had laying around our house. Uh, I had some. I had a few ideas. Um, you know, I, I have a whole team of people who love to do this kind of stuff, so I sort of <laughs> threw it out. Um, so I, I had a few ideas to get me ready. Uh, Brett Roundsville, who makes an app called Mission Pick, he had an excellent uh, case uh, that I think we can show. Um, Zach, I don't know if you have that. That's a number 18 uh, that he used in a pinch to watch movies on a plane with his iPhone uh, using just something that he had laying around uh, there. And that is, of course, a barf bag. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's great. Yeah, so that, that, that I was like, okay, I'm inspired. I think I, think I get the idea here. Uh, and uh, then um, Jason, uh, who's- I would feel bad though if he had to actually be sick. Yeah, I know. It says he was the first time yeah. he had to use a barf bag, and he used it. I don't know. Be, do people actually use the barf bags? I don't. I think I have once. I don't before, think I would find. I don't know. No, no. I don't know. I probably <laughs> wouldn't find it in time. <laughs> now, Jason Cleanthes, he's out of town today, but he showed me that he made uh, something that I think we can show. I'll leave it there so the camera can see it. Um, he made an iPad stand uh, with a craft easel that he just got at Michael's, and he adjusted it. It used to have that. Gorgeous. So you can fit the cable right through there. That was when they had the long cables that went through there, and you can um, adjust it back and forth. And he, you know, filed it up a little bit. So yeah, so that that uh, I got some inspiration there. So um, that's going to put me to shame. Now I feel a little bad. I'm it's like, going to put oh, me no. to shame too. So why don't you start? Do you, do you want to? Should I start or do you want to start? Yeah. Why don't you start? You okay. Start. Um, hmm. Well, here's one. This is one that I didn't make either, but I'll show it. it the, it's the toilet paper. Uh, roll, which is not just an i a, a stand for the iPhone, but it's also a speaker for the iPhone. It amplifies. Oh, cool. And again, I didn't make this one either. Tony Wang made it, uh, but and he spent a lot of time on it, as you can see. So let's see if it actually uh, works. Um, it works as a stand beautifully, I might say. That's uh, fabulous. And, and in, let's see if it uh, also amplifies, I guess I could see <laughs> the music. So yeah, there we are. I love it. That's great. I love it too. What do you got? <laughs> okay. So uh, the first one was I got a case of one of the dollar store cases and um, I figured I might as well bling it up. So I covered it Ooh. in rhinestones and I have to say I had a lot of fun doing this, probably way too much fun. And I think it looks, it actually looks kind of pretty good. I think it's got it the little like bit of the sparkle. And is know, that an it's iPhone got 6 grip. case or iPhone, it's an iPhone, or iPhone 6, 6 plus. plus case? Oh, that must have taken a lot of time. A lot of sparkles. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of rhinestones on this case. And uh, no, I thought it was 
It's a lot that of fun. That is good. Though. So did you use a glitter glue gun or did they have their own adhesive sticky? This has in? its own adhesive. Mm -hmm. And the wonderful thing is I didn't have to put them on section by section because it came in a strip. So this, they came in strips and I could just break them off. It was, it was great. That, that is good. Yeah. So uh, they, those came at the dollar store too? The they the all came at the dollar store. So yeah. that's $2 for that case. Yeah, it was $2 okay. for the case. Well, I have an even cheaper case uh, that I got at the dollar store. It was still a dollar, but uh, mine was an iPhone uh, 5 case. And um, I, I did this glitter myself. I like I, I know it probably doesn't look it. I know you're surprised, but uh, no, it looks beautiful. The, the case was a dollar. <laughs> and I don't know if you can tell, but my hands and face are now covered with glitter. <laughs> this one also came with a stand. So for a dollar, you can get this excellent case uh, for a stand. I'll set it up there so we can really uh, see what it looks like. Um, I don't know that I really recommend a dollar store case if you drop your phone a lot. Um, do you? I drop my phone all the time, so I, but here we go. I have a case that um, you can have if you drop your phone. You want to get a dollar store case, and okay. you only want to spend like a dollar or two on your case. Here we go. I have a case that I made that is protective in nature, <laughs> as long as you don't drop it on its face. But here we go. Oh, that's that, beautiful. That's my protective. Thank you. I, I know. Don't don't everyone be jealous and try to run out to get your own pom poms. So this is my pom pom case, but it's really protective <laughs> and it goes around the edges. I had to be careful about like making sure that I could still take pictures. Like I make this ridiculous case and I'm actually thinking, well, could I still take photos with this? What about the headphone um, jack? Did you didn't cover that up? Did you? Oh no no, it's, okay. it's I'm still good. I have it. It's all it's all ready. So there we go. It's my pom pom case. Yeah. And were I, I thought I'm gonna rock this one and just go out and see if anyone says anything when I talk on the phone. I'm gonna be like, <laughs> what kind of strange looks I get? I would. And like it's to fun see to swish. This is a good stress relief device at the same time. Right. And if you wanna uh, keep your uh, phone on your pillow, if that's something that you know, as we talked about last week, not advisable. Right. But if not you want advisable. to, that's very soft. Right. If, for, if you have your sleep tracker on, you can lay it there. Right. It's soft actually for your shoulder as well. So if you do this, oh, yeah. soft and comfortable at That's the same time. Perfect. So did you, was that dollar store pom-poms as well? Dollar store pom-poms. This was, you know, $2. So did you use all the pom-poms or would there be more pom-poms left? There's, you you could, I think that you can make three cases okay. from a dollar of pom-poms. <laughs> <laughs> all right. For those of you rushing out. So I don't want to leave the iPad users out. Here's something. Um, that I, I found this idea on the internet where you can find everything. Uh, but so this, you might think, is the thesaurus that I received as a graduation gift from high school in 1991, <laughs> uh, which I use all the time. But really, it's not. It's an iPad case. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the so, heaviest iPhone case in existence. Yes. I love. It. Yeah. So you could whatever you could use this for an iPhone or an iPad, an iPad Mini, um, and you just you know you just take a razor blade and cut out as deep as you want to in there. Uh, it's a good anti theft device. It is. As well. I mean, that's what I think. Like if you you know yeah, if you are having a lot of people over, your house is on the market. A lot of people are coming in, and you want to, or you just yeah, you your house gets broken into a lot. You just put it in there. Put it on the shelf, and you voila. probably have other problems if your house gets broken into a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you might have other problems, but maybe your children are addicted to uh, the iPad, and yeah. uh, you want to hide it from them. That's you also yeah. have other problems if that, and you you know keep it there. I, I haven't, love that. There should probably be a, there could probably be a way to get a plug out of there too, so you can charge it while it's in the bookcase. Exactly. Um, exactly. But I haven't figured that out yet. So. Yeah, it reminds me of my book bookcase, which is adorable. Somewhere I have for my iPhone also, which is, it looks like a book, which is just adorable, but it, it really actually is a case, so I love it. So what else you got? Okay, so I have, uh, for those of you that are missing um, Leo, here we go. You can make your own. Oh. <laughs> there we go, making Leo together again. That's so cute. How did you do that? So that one, I just podged it on. Oh. So I, I just, you take take your favorite photos of, of the people that you love and then just <laughs> glue it on, put a little podge. You can actually put it on the inside, but then it, you would have had like that little frosted look. And I thought, I don't know. So there we go. Oh, that, I cut your hair a little bit too I short. was going to say that it does look like I'm balding a little bit on top. I know. But I, I went, didn't want to oh, criticize. No, I glue it back on? And I'm like, no, that's going to be even more strange. So I'm like, just leave it. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, there was when I was doing some searches for this, the, the Mod Podge came up a lot, and I'm not. Is yes. that just like clear paint? It is like a type of varnish that is good for paper, and then it has a, a little gloss after. It's very nice and usable for almost anything. So you can get it at any craft store. Um, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to to do that with your picture next. Um, <laughs> I have just one more left. I think I might run out of, and this one. I also saw on the YouTube, and I've been practicing. Let me try it with this. This is an old Tech TV balloon, just as your standard balloon, and then you blow it up. Okay, I think um, we've got to, I didn't really plan this, but um, maybe here, is this a good place to do it right here? Can you see this okay? Let's see. I don't want to miss this, although I might have to do it several times. Is that the best shot, Zach? I can also do it. Okay. All right. Let's do it there. That's perfect. All right. So we'll oh, put the camera ready. Yeah. Let me move this stuff out of the way. I don't want to get hurt. <laughs> yeah, be careful. One. This is dangerous. All right. You place it on there. I didn't tie up the balloon. Then you press hard. Oh, I think I did it. Ta da! <laughs> oh, it is a perfect. I covered up the tech TV. You can sort of see it, but. Um, yeah, that would have been smart That's to do great. on the upper side. You could blow it up too a little bit to make it soft and bouncy. <laughs> Here, can you take this shot again? Right, now it's protective. <laughs> yeah, it bounces, it floats, <laughs> it's not waterproof. Um, but yeah, that, that is even less than a dollar. I wonder if that could be waterproof. If you could, yeah, you could, you know, suction it all the way around, it would probably be waterproof and you'd still find your phone after. Yeah. If you're on a boat right. without a Ziploc bag. True. And it works. I mean, the, the, you know, probably the pictures you take would be a little bit red, um, <laughs> and no headphones. It's a jack. filter. But uh, the phone itself really um, works, and you could drop and it. And it makes a strange noise after. Yeah. So yeah, just you can use it as a musical instrument. Yes, mm, you could. It does make a strange. <laughs> I tied it, so I can't make a strange. I tied it because I'm going to use this permanently as my case. Um, okay, well, I'll go off around with the, the pom-poms. You go around with that, and then in a week we can here. say what happened. How many people oh, said yeah. strange stuff to us? The shoulder thing, this works too, yeah. That works great. Yeah. So it, just, it has good grip. You're yeah. not going to drop your phone. Mm -hmm. So just the tips, you got to have a flat surface that works best and, you know, push it. and uh, Yeah, I mean, in a pinch, I think. In a pinch. Yeah. If you're dying for a case, mm -hmm. and there's no case around. Right. Uh, so I think party. I've used up all my crafts. Um, I have other craft <laughs> tools, like Silly Putty. If anyone knows how to make something out of Silly Putty, I have these. Cost me a dollar for two. Um, and then this glue that I, it's called Sugru, which I think is like a fancy kind of rubbery glue. I was a little bit scared to use, but that could be something. But I th Yeah, I think I've heard people making cases with that. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, so did you have, was that all I have you? one more that I actually oh. tried. I thought that I was cheating. So I actually made a case um, and, and it shows. So this is my <laughs> duct tape case. There we go. And I have like a little tiny like holder and wait, I even have, this is, this is real Canadian money. It's not a joke. Oh, good. Um, and I even made myself a little pocket that if you move it across to the side, you can put your money in. There we go. And it fits my phone, and it does look like a monstrosity, but there we go. I like Your duct it. tape, iPhone case. Uh, headphone jack? Power cable? Uh, <laughs> uh, wait, I, I might have, there might be a few issues, technical issues on these ones. Might need, but I can take pictures. Look, I did get, oh, that's, there we go. Yeah. You can take yeah. photos. I didn't think of anything else. That, that beats the, <laughs> the iPhone Needs a headphone case. jack. That beats the balloon. The balloon, no pictures, unless you want them to be red. Well, but the balloon is easy. This one took, like, effort and... Right. Tea. Uh, yeah, it took a while. Yeah. But, you know. I think we did pretty <laughs> there good. There we go. It's not bad. Not no. bad. <laughs> uh, I am going to put all of these up on our uh, iOS Today Reddit. And uh, if you're interested, go to iOS Today slash R... No, Reddit slash R slash iOS today, and I'm going to put them all up as soon as I get done with this show, or if anyone else wants to put them up, they're welcome to, and then people can vote them up. Uh, oh, I like so, that idea. And see which is... Vote for pom-poms. <laughs> <laughs> balloon. 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 <laughs>
<laughs> I like them all, and I thank you so much for having this idea because I don't, I'm not, as I know, as you can tell, with my hands covered in glitter and not knowing what Mod Podge is. Uh, I am not <laughs> normally a crafter, so this this was a good experience out of my comfort zone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a short break. Afterwards, uh, we're going to answer some questions, talk about some news, talk about this weird DRM issue with Apple Music. Uh, so hopefully, um, I we will both help you understand it. Maybe you out there will help us understand it a little more. Uh, but first, uh, iOS Today is brought to you by our sponsors. Uh, Lynda.com is one of our sponsors. Uh, they are one of my favorite sponsors. They do excellent videos, um, pretty much to learn anything, especially if you want to get a new job or you're, uh, you want to work on the job that you have and increase your skills. Uh, if you're interested in photography, Lynda.com just started a new weekly series called The DIY Photographer with Joseph Lenashki. In his first installment, he teaches you how to make your own macro lens for just a few dollars, which works with us. We're, we're obviously into making things for just a few dollars. There's also a series of brand new courses on Adobe's Creative Cloud updates for 2015, including tutorials on Photoshop, Premiere Pro, Audition, After Effects, InDesign, and Illustrator. There's even a first look at developing for the Apple Watch. Uh, I love Lynda.com's courses on how to get things done. I love the, the one about how to get started with the Apple Watch. Um, they have how to get started on pretty much anything that you want to get started on. You can watch and learn from top experts. They're passionate about teaching. You can download tutorials, watch them on the go, including on your iPhone or your iPad. You can create and save playlists of courses you want to watch to customize your learning path or share with friends, colleagues, and team members. Uh, you can browse each course transcript to follow along, or you can search for an answer and skip right to that point if you just have a few minutes. Uh, your Lynda.com membership gives you unlimited access to training on hundreds of topics, all for one flat rate. Whether you're looking to become an expert, you're passionate about a hobby, or you just want to learn something new, visit lynda.com slash iOS today and sign up for your free 10-day trial. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash iOS today. And we thank lynda.com for their support. So let's go with a little iOS news. Of course, uh, before we get to the DRM stuff, uh, iOS 8.4 came out. Um, that's how you would get Apple Music. Um, there were a few updates to iBooks. Um, I think a few other updates. Uh, I assume you have your, your software updated. I do. I do. I only did it. I usually don't update. I usually wait and let everyone else be guinea, pig, guinea pigs just in case there's any issues with anything. But because I wanted to get Apple Music, I did update. So what do you think of Apple Music so far? I like it. I think that the, I, I, I'm enjoying it. I, sadly, I really like the curated music. And so Kanye's tunes are tunes that I really love. And so I'm like, okay, well, there we go. But um, I think that the interface is a little bit of a mess. Mm -hmm. And I, I find that there's too much and it's difficult to figure out where am I in comparison to something else. So I don't really understand it yet. And so I think that for people that are new to it or don't already use streaming services, it's a little bit too, they tried to cram, I think, too much on the page. I would have liked something that was a little bit more cleaner. Um, but I guess everyone wants a little piece of something right. and so that it's there. Yeah. And have you, have you, have you upgraded? I have did, you yeah. Yep, I uh, have it on my iPhone, my iPad. I really love it. Um, I like listening to Beats One Radio. Um, I like all the playlists that I'm able to make, and I like the ones that are curated. Like, there's one I love called Whistle While You Work, which is all oh, really? songs that have whistling in them. Um, <laughs> so it's like Billy Joel's For the Longest Time, and then, you know, even just like brand new songs by like Arcade Fire that have whistling in them. You know, just all the bands, and, uh, and I, I really like it. And I like how easy it, like, you can just, you know, share it and then text it to a friend um yeah you know, we had fourth of july over the weekend i think did you have canada day over the weekend we do on the first yes. uh so happy canada day thank you happy fourth of july <laughs> so it's really easy to send it's like someone else made the fourth of july playlist and i you know just texted it to my friend who was having the party and you know said play the play this and you know i picked out a song that i really wanted her to have playing as i arrived at the party <laughs> oh i love that you had your own entrance music yes that's what i it, apple music has helped me become the diva that i've always wanted right to. right it <laughs> unleashes the inner diva that's their tagline but it was interesting to talk <laughs> about it all week with people that are you know tech journalists and you know have their take and then to spend the weekend with you know friends and family uh, who are not tech journalists and you know just to get their take on it which i think that's who this is aimed at you know the people yes. that are still uh you know 
listening to ad supported Pandora. And, uh, you know, that they're like, oh, I can do all this. But, you know, it, it does have like a lot of people are just, you know, I don't want to pay $9.99 a month. You know, that that is yes. still, a, you know, a, a blockade for some people. Um, so I had, yeah. you know, I helped people update and then I helped them show them how, you know, you can go into the settings and have it not uh, automatically charge your credit card in three months, which people were like, OK, well, then I'll try it, you know. Yeah. And I'm and the fourteen ninety nine for six different people. So if you live in a large family, that's very affordable. And really nice if you've ever had you know your music like you know your children's music, uh, just sort of totally mess up their recommendation engine for you. you yes, know, which is what yes. happens to me exactly all the time. Yeah, exactly. And I get all these kids tunes, and I'm like, oh no, really? Yes. Yeah, or as we played before, some Nicki Minaj, which um, Apple Music, <laughs> I don't like Nicki Minaj. <laughs> and in fact, my so daughter doesn't back, either. Tell them. Oh, no, really? She did, you know, three years ago when she bought it for 99 cents, you know, from iTunes. But, you know, so that there's there's that issue, too. Right. But, yeah, right. so far, I, I like it. Um, yeah, I so, like it, too. I think that I'll, I'll keep with it, so. Uh, and then anything else worth talking about with the update besides Apple Music? I, I don't think that anything that anyone would really notice, um, you know, for some people they're having going through the same kind of uh, some bugs, but, uh, you know, it, it's just kind of the usual stuff that happens with an update and it'll be fixed up and you're going to be all fine. So I don't I haven't had anything else that anyone's really been shouting about. It's all about Apple Music right now. Right. Well, they had that um, iMessage bug where you would send the certain characters to people and that's fixed. Yes, so. yes that's yeah. been fixed. So. Mm -hmm. Interesting and strange bug that was. Right, and so then the DRM stuff that we've been hearing about is that uh, it's confusing. I uh, mean, you know, DR yeah. DRM is digital rights management, so that's the stuff that Apple adds to your music. Um, but so when I don't, you try to explain it first. <laughs> sure. Okay. So, so before that, people were you have your music and it's yours. You've paid for it on iTunes and you get to keep it. Now, because Apple has a streaming site, you can still download upload music that you have, but this is from the streaming service. So what they've done to protect everyone in the case so that you don't, what they were worried about is that, and all streaming services have DRM onto the music that you have while you're streaming. So what they do is they add that as a protection so that you don't take Apple for the free three months, download, you know, 100,000 songs, and then cut your music service. So the music service, it's like you're renting music. It's not yours, you're just renting it. And as long as you have the music service, you have this music that you have maybe even put up onto your phone. Once you cut the service, then of course you've lost all the music that you've had that you haven't actually paid for. You paid to stream, you didn't pay to get the music yourself. So I think that for a lot of people they're confused because you know they expect they have their iTunes music and they're worried that they're gonna get DRM'd, they're gonna have it become proprietary and they'll lose their songs that they've already paid for when they cut their service to Apple Music, but that's not going to happen. <laughs> okay, so that's with, not, they're different. So that uh, Nicki Minaj song that I have that I paid yes. ninety nine cents for. Yes. So when I um, when I play it through Apple Music, it's not actually playing my music, right? It's just matching it to the the same Nicki Minaj song that already is that has the DRM in it. Correct? Yes, but yours is still yours. Okay. So as long as you have your hard copy. So what the problem is, is that sometimes people were, um, you know, putting, sending everything to the cloud and then deleting their hard copies on their Mac. And then they were then trying to get back their music. And yes, it was all DRM because when Apple searches through your music files, it does not find the hard copy of that. So don't do that. So you want to keep your hard copy of your music and then you don't have to worry. Um, there's two really quick fixes for this if you're worried. So if you want, if there's like, for me, it's no problem. I don't mind. If I really like a song, I'm going to buy it on iTunes and then it is mine and I don't have to worry about it. If I'm paying for a streaming service, I like the fact that it's fluid. I, as long as I have the, flu, the streaming service, I have all the songs that I've chosen to match and I get to use them while I stream. And, you know, I, even if I don't have any internet connectivity, then I, I still get to stream that music, which is really nice. If I stop the service, then I don't, I expect that the music that I did not actually pay for that I would not get to keep. If you want to have your own music, you can get your iTunes match, which is, it will then match your music and it's only $25 a year. So it's only like $2. So it's an extra $2 a month for your service. And then all the music that you would get 
will be yours and you don't have to worry and all of it's DRM free. So that way then you could just delete all your music off your Mac and not have to worry? Yes, okay. yes, it's it's yours. You can just upload it again. Some people are getting going through some bugs in that they're they're um, they have iTunes Mac, they have Apple Music, and they're worried that they they can tell that the music is from the Apple Music version, and so that's just a bug. You can um, re delete the file, re log out, and then log back in, and then re-download, and then it will still be yours. It's just a bug. You do not have to worry about that happening. It's just because. It's new, they haven't gone through everything, and so don't worry, that will be fixed up. Right, so then there's a lot of people also complaining that you know their, their music was all mixed up, like they had this custom album art and it was mixed up, or their, you know, it was renamed the wrong thing. And I think you know, those are very vocal people on the internet that have you know, their music collection exactly the way yes, they want it. Yes, and they've probably, yeah, they fixed it and they've made it all perfect. And yes, this has caused a few mess ups in the way that things are organized. Um, and, and that you're probably going to have to just go back through and reorganize all your stuff, which is horrible, but, um, you know, you don't have to worry about repurchasing stuff. You may have to go through like reselecting things and moving things around into different curations that you've already organized to that, um, which happens sometimes when we, we go through a new, um, update. Right. Well, Serenity Caldwell, who works at iMore with where you also work, um, has a great, just explanation of this that uh, is very clear. Uh, and I have it real, right here up on my iPad if we want to take a look. Um, and she talks about exactly what is going on and what is not going on. Uh, and one of the things she points out is that to, to remind people that Apple Music is not a cloud service. Like it's not a place for you to store all your music. It's not like, a backup, right. no. So if you're using that um, for that, then then everything we talked about is might happen. and. That's not its purpose. They're, you know, they're, that's not Apple's fault. That that's not what they had intended it for. Right. So, so we will link to that in the show notes. Uh, it's a great explanation. Um, so there was another piece of news that we wanted to talk about. Apple Care will now replace any battery that is below eighty percent. Um, that's big news. It used to be like the battery had to go down to fifty or thirty yeah, percent or something. It, yeah, it had to be actually a defective battery for them to fix it. So um, with lithium ion batteries. Which, which are fabulous battery sets, but after time they can start to lose their charge. So you're not gonna get um, as much of a fill as you had before. And that used to be, you would have to cover that. So now with the Apple Care Plus, you can actually have a, you know one of your older phones that are slowly not getting the charger with your Mac and they'll fix that for you. So it increases your the reasons for getting Apple Care. Great. Uh, and now I didn't tell you we were going to talk about this, but I'm, I'm going to spring this on you. Um, have you seen the trailer for the new Steve Jobs movie? I did not yet see the trailer to it. I've heard everyone complaining about it. I don't watch movie trailers because oh, I... You don't like to know I, anything? I Yeah, it just kind of ruins the in enjoyment of what's going to be happening okay. through the movie. And so I'm like, oh, well, they're going to go into this story that I already know and that story that we're already going to be dealing with so many times. And so I haven't seen it yet. Have you seen it? I have seen it, but uh, we don't have to talk about it. If you like, I know, you know, I know a lot of people are information blackout. You don't want Oh, no, no, that's okay. Go for it. <laughs> so do you know, <laughs> I, I wanted to talk to you about uh, the character that Kate Winslet is playing. Um, Joanna Woodward, I think is her name. Um, and I guess I had not really, and I, I read Walter Isaacson's uh, book about Steve Jobs, but I just, um, I was fascinated that there was this woman that, that had been there since the beginning, and you don't really hear that much about her, but I'm really fascinated. I think they have really played up her role, which was probably big all along, but not really covered to the extent of, you know, Steve Wozniak, and, you know, I, he was obviously a bigger part of Apple than, than she was. But, yeah, I just wanted to get your take on it if you uh, had heard anything about her. No, I haven't. I think it's a wonderful thing, though. It's nice to be able to see, you know, the women that also influenced the man that he became instead of just, um, you know, going through this, the same stories. I, that's, that's the problem with going through dealing with people that are icons is that I've heard the story so many different times in so many different ways. I like to see them from different angles. Um, you know, for me, it's all interesting about his psychology and what people influenced him for what reasons and why. Yeah, so I am really looking forward to the movie because I'm a huge fan of Danny Boyle, who directed Train Spotting, and um, a few other movies that are just uh, slipping my mind right now. But um, some movies that I've loved and written, of course, by Aaron Sorkin, who um, yeah. did The Social Network. Amazing. And so, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. West Wing. Uh, yes, The West Wing, of course. So, yeah, if. Uh, so that's the Steve Jobs movie, not to be confused with the one that came out last year or two years ago uh, that wasn't any good. 
<laughs> so uh, I have some emails that we were going to talk about. Um, you guys can write to us too at iOS Today uh, at twit.tv and or you can post some. I get these from our Reddit, which I mentioned before, which is reddit.com slash r slash iOS Today, um, our subreddit. This first one uh, I'm going to read from Ian. Uh, it is not a question, but some comments. He says, I'm a 12-year-old iOS Today fan. I love listening to your show with my family when we go on road trips. My dad has been listening to Twit since 2004. I have, had se I have several suggestions and ideas. You should do an episode all about kids' games. Um, and now, Georgia, we've talked a little bit about um, doing kids' content when, when I was talking about uh, what, what should we do. That was some suggestions right. that you had, like my child's addicted to the, to the iPhone or, you know, best kids games and uh, it's always hard because I don't you know I know that all of our viewers and listeners don't have children so I don't want to alienate anybody um, right. but I, I do think that this is good content like there's so much to be said about kids stuff from a kid's point of view or from a parent's point of view right right and it's interesting you want to be able to have applications that they're going to interact with that you don't have to worry or going to expand their minds. It's not something that they're going to have to worry too much about becoming addicted to or something that they're going to enjoy but also get something else out of there. And a lot of different games are not as appropriate or might be more frustrating for them because they're not at the level. And some kids' games are just as much fun for adults too. So, Yeah, it's also hard too because some kids are so different. Like obviously just yes. their age and um, sometimes by gender, but also just every kid is very different. So, you know, what's great for some kid might be really scary for another child or, you yes. know, so, um, but also Ian uh, wanted to tell us that he writes his own comics at Pip the Alien. Um, I don't know if there we go. Uh, oh, so I cute. just wanted to show that off um, because it's awesome. And he has his own website with great comics. Uh, and he also had some other suggestions for our show. Uh, look at geeky, funny Siri jokes that sh she replies to, which I don't know if anybody heard that there was this, uh, a lot of people were talking on the internet um, over the week about what happened when Siri um, says, uh, what's zero, when you ask Siri, what's zero divided by zero? Have you asked Siri that? Yes. I'm gonna yes. see if I can do it with my balloon case. I can't, because it's, <laughs> what's zero divided by zero? person get c it doesn't make sense and cookie monster is said that there are no cookies and you are saying that you have no friends <laughs> i love that it's just like I it's so that. random cookie monster it's yeah perfect. why bring cookie monster into it and she also oh, oh, oh took the balloon case off <laughs> lucky lucky that blue oh no <laughs> she also she or he also says it's indeterminate that's what zero divided by zero uh, is so thank you. I Ian, changed my I changed my phone by the way, oh. as you had said. I did change my voice to um, someone had written in saying that you were looking for it, and so I got a UK version of Siri. Oh, in, so I have I have my own Jarvis. Oh, you do? Um, yes, yes. Can we so hear what? Okay. Beam me up. Please install the latest version of iCloud and try again. There we go. <laughs> I do like that. You got to tell me, uh, how did you get it? Tell everybody. I, I chose I chose Siri to be UK, and it would have the, the nice Jarvis Englishy accent, and then I changed it to male. And now it's color spelled wrong, and you have to get in a queue instead of a line. And well, in, in Canada, we spell a... color actually either way. Oh. So we sometimes do it the UK version. Sometimes we do it American. It depends on the person. Okay. So for me, it's fine. As long as I'm not forced <laughs> to eat french fries with vinegar, then I'm fine. <laughs> not, you're not forced to, okay. I promise. Got it. <laughs> uh, let's see, what's another email that we have? Um, oh, well, last week we were talking about uh, Plane Finder. That was one of your apps. And we were going back and forth about, would, will, will Siri do this? Uh, and Andre from Kalamazoo, Michigan, says that um, you can just ask Siri what planes are overhead and she will show you the planes, uh, distance, angle, and map. But this also uses Plane Finder's da data, the data from the app that you were talking about, so. Right, I was a little disappointed. I, I realized that Plane Finder is not as located, like is not as good for exactly where your location is. <laughs> so there's some planes that I see really close by the sky and you, you kind of, you get an aggregate of like, maybe it's this plane. Mm -hmm. So I was a little bit disappointed in that, so. 
Well, we also have a voicemail, which I can play from my iPad. Uh, you can also always call us. I'm going to play this voicemail, and then I'm going to tell you what the number is because I don't have it memorized yet. Let's see if this works. Hi, I'm Ali, and I'm from Saudi Arabia. I would like to ask you a question. How could I change the time for a bunch of photos in iOS? Thank you, and thank you for the show. Bye. <laughs> Uh, so, how does she change the time on a bunch of photos in iOS? Um, I think I can do this, but I might need your help. Um, let's see. Uh, let's go to all photos, and I will take this picture of my son from, let's see. You know what? Um, hmm. Let's see if this works. Edit? No. You know, I realized now I was doing this on my Mac. I absolutely know how to do it on the Mac. How about you, Georgia? Do you know where to change the time on the iPad? I, I don't. Mm. I've never, ever done that. Um, so, like, you could do it if you connect it to your computer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so in photos, that's how I did it. In photos in Mac, you just open them up and then, you know, you hit the uh, image and then just change time and date. So yes. presumably um, that, that would then change them in photos. Uh, maybe someone in the chat room knows uh, how to, or someone around here knows how to do it with the iPad. Um, but so far I am not seeing it in here. But it's pretty easy and you can change a bunch of them at once. Just select them all in photos in the Mac and then... Um, change date and time. It isn't, the, the menu is, I think it's under the image menu is the, the menu that you use, I think. All right, do you think it's time for us? To, oh no, you had a tip I have, about deleting I have, multiple contacts. Yes, I have a tip and I have something that I think that everyone should get if they have a large iPhone. <laughs> Just my thought on it. Um, so I, I had this, I, I got a great I have all these contacts. I have like thousands of different contacts that are the same of the same of the same person. Unfortunately, just from how many times I have updated, unupdated, saved things, and so I have like some duplicates that are like ten or twelve of the same person. And so what I got was I got Contacts Duster Pro, which is an application that you can get, which will clean up in just one click and it completely cleans all of the duplicates, the zombie ones, whatever you want. And it was amazing. So pick that up if you are sick of having duplicates in your contacts list. I just loved it. And what's it called again? It's called um, Contacts Duster Pro. Contacts Duster Pro, okay. I found a few uh, apps like that uh, that were really helpful. One that even found I had spelled someone's name slightly the same, you know, hmm. and like slightly differently. Like I'd, and it noticed that they were spelled enough the same that they were probably a duplicate contact. Uh, maybe oh, that's they great. Saw, yeah, and then deleted that. So um, groups used to be able to do it for free, um, but unfortunately, they no longer have that usability on it. Oh, well, that's too bad. So. Um, I forgot to remind you about the hat. I assume you have one. I do. Okay. Well, we're going to do our favorite apps. Uh, of the week. Um, mine is not new, but um, it, it was my favorite <laughs> app of this week. There you go. <laughs> but before we do that, I am going to let you know that iOS Today is also sponsored by Gazelle. Uh, and Gazelle is the fast and simple way to sell your used gadgets. Uh, we probably all have iPhones, iPads, all kinds of other uh, devices uh, that we have used and loved and decided that we needed something newer and they might be just collecting dirt and dust in our drawers uh, and they don't need to. You can sell them to Gazelle so you can buy even more new stuff. Uh, maybe you're saving for an Apple Watch or the newest iPad. Uh, you can sell your used gadgets with Gazelle and you can also buy certified pre-owned iPhones directly from Gazelle. So if you've lost or broken your phone, a certified pre-owned device is a great way to buy a low-cost replacement device. And as I said, Gazelle offers great deals on trade-ins for your old devices. Devices are available in two conditions, certified like new and certified good. Certified good devices show some gentle signs of wear, but they offer you uh, a little extra money. You can save a little extra money on a great device. All devices have been put through a rigorous 30-point inspection to ensure their 
are fully functional and certified pre-owned devices are backed by a 30-day risk-free return policy. Uh, you get paid in cash for your devices. Payment is fast within a few days of your item being received. It's risk-free. They'll also wipe your data for free, which is great because you don't want to have all your contacts and photos and all your other personal information and passwords on a phone that's going to uh, be owned by someone else very soon. Gazelle has paid nearly $175 million to over 1 million customers. Uh, they offer free shipping, and most items will qualify for a free box. Some products to check on the site right now, iPhone 6 Plus, 64 gigabytes uh, from AT&T, an iPhone 6 from Verizon, an iPad Air uh, for, for, uh, with 16 gigabytes, of, and an iPad Mini with Retina display. Uh, what is your iPhone worth? You can take a minute to find out. Go to Gazelle. Dot com. All right, my hat is somewhere in here under my thesaurus, <laughs> my bag of balloons. Here it is. There we go. Oh, I like yours. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. Oh, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> Did you just have that sitting around? I, I just have it sitting around. <laughs> <laughs> is it a Halloween costume or just when you feel it's, like you need to? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't, when I need to get my Thor on, because this is in in light of their Thor is now female. Oh, uh, so that. <laughs> so I was that trying is, to. I was like, is it Batman? Like, I think I probably should know who it is, but I don't know, so I'm not going to say. Until <laughs> <laughs> like, George, give me a hint. Yeah, uh, where's your hammer? I I. Uh, yeah, I, I lost. I lost my hammer. <laughs> I do have though a fuzzy case. Right, that's your hammer. That's Shh. your hammer. And like, if I tried to pick up or anyone else tried to pick that up, they could. They wouldn't no be able to pick, pick it up. No one can pick up my, no. my It protects my iPhone. Yes. <laughs> no one would want to. <laughs> All right. So, what is your um, your app cap? We're wearing these hats because this is our favorite oh, app yes, of the week. Not, and, um, this is so. just the way I run around. <laughs> Um, so my favorite one, this one I absolutely adore. So it's Dialer. It's a speed dialing widget for your phone, which is amazing. So everyone probably already knows that if you double click the home button, your most recent people that you've called come up on the top of your phone. But you have to press the button and then choose which of their phone numbers, what to do, do you want to message them and not. The wonderful thing is that Dialer adds a widget so you can just pull down and immediately you have all of your um, favorite people on the top. You press their picture and immediately it just calls them. So you just slide down and then touch the icon and it will call them in a heartbeat. So you don't even have to think. Okay, well, I, uh, I installed this um, and, and I added it and it was very cool. So like I have all the important people. I don't know if I, if I, I can call my daughter because she's at camp and she's not allowed to have her phone. So um, will it show her phone number if I press that? you think? Go ahead and press okay. It doesn't. Um, so now tell me again what I'm, I can just slide down. I slide down my notifications. There's everybody. Exactly. I just call my daughter again. And you can choose where, it, where you want to place it. So I have it so that it's at the top. So I see it right away and it will immediately dial and it's only 99 cents. Oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah. I, lo I love the widgets. I don't, um, I, I have also the Chrome widget that I really like to use. And, um, but yeah, this is really great, uh, especially yeah. because Siri doesn't always get it right when I um, want to tell her to call people. Um, no, and, and if I, I have someone that has multiple numbers, then I, it will ask me which number that I want to call, and I'm frustrated by then. So this makes it really nice, quick, and easy. And even if they are in your recents, I get a lot of calls from people that are not people that I would regularly call or I have clients. And so this makes it fast and easy. I don't have to search. I don't have to press any buttons. It's just slide down and call them. That's, yeah, it's great. Um, well, mine uh, is not for productivity. It's for the opposite of productivity. Uh, well, this, is, this is good because I think that yours will work well with mine because if you can't find how to call someone. Right. If you uh, have used the app Delectable, um, which is for finding wine, and you know, then you can't find phone numbers anymore. So it's really an iPhone. You look so cute. 
<laughs> it's really an iPhone app, so you can tell it looks kind of, but I'm just showing it. It's, it's a little bit bigger here. Um, and uh, so I took a picture. I guess this is what you can do. I will show it on my iPhone. I think it makes more sense to show it on my iPhone. Um, it's been around a while. Uh, it's funny because Sarah Lane, who used to do the i5 for the iPhone show, um, she showed it when it first came out. And uh, she used this same bottle of wine that we found on Padre's desk. Uh, you would think that the Twit Studios had just wine <laughs> sitting around everywhere, but apparently we don't. Uh, so you take the app and then uh, you can press the camera button there and just, I was like, okay, well, so someone brought this wine to my house and I want to know if it's good or how much they paid for it. And I just take a picture of it. And then, can you see the label? Yes. And then it comes up with all the reviews. That's wonderful. And it's from Illinois, where all the best wines are made. <laughs> and it has all these reviews. It's sweet, fruity, uh, blackberry, and you can you know, see their ratings. Uh, I think this is really useful. Um, you know, just because you just, I don't really know anything about wine. Um, exactly. My parents know a lot about wine, but they're not always around for me to ask. <laughs> so I, uh, I really like it because you, you know, it's like, oh, someone brought this bottle of wine. Is it good to eat with, you know, this pasta or is it, you know, is it something I should save for a special occasion? So, right. And it makes you seem very knowledgeable right away. You can figure out a little bit about wine. You can impress your friends. Right. Yeah, and so the reason why I bring this up also, it was, it was featured in the New York Times because I think they, uh, Delectable just released all of this wine data that just shows our tastes in wine are changing and you know what we're drinking more of, what we're drinking less of. And uh, so it was interesting. So yeah, you can just go through and find a wine. Um, I like the app on the iPad too um, because it's bigger and you can see all the different things. So. I love the fact that you can just take a photo instead of having to type everything in. Yeah, because I used to do that with like Google goggles. Did you ever use that? Um, and that would sometimes work or yeah, just having to type it in and just see like yeah. you know, which bottle of wine you know, and you know, suddenly you discover that it, the bottle of wine you thought your cheap friend got you was really, you know, $150. And... The one that you cooked with, yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> and it also works with beer. Um, and I also, you know, I was testing it out at home and like I had a bottle of Pellegrino, just the like bottled water. I took a picture of it and there are all these reviews of Pellegrino, huh. just like someone saying, you know, just bubbly enough to eat with my ham sandwich, that sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. So that's it, Georgia. We're, um, we're done. Uh, I, I'm sure that uh, we will talk again soon. Um, Thank you. But next week, Renee Ritchie, also from iMore, is going to come on, um, unless I've scared him away somehow. <laughs> I'm sure not. I'm sure not. <laughs> and as we discussed last week, you know, you guys do martial arts together. So um, we do. we're going to find out if he thinks you would win in a fight or he would win in a fight. And uh, yeah, I'm sure uh, he'll give us the same answer. Not the same answer you did. Well, I don't know. What, what answer do you think he's going to give us? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm intrigued, actually. I'm intrigued to hear what he will say. <laughs> Well, I'll have to like go to his house and then like, you know, attack him in the middle of the show. So right. That, and prove it. Prove that you can. Prove it. Exactly. <laughs> and you know what? I meant to say that uh, my dad who listens to the show was like, you know, you were talking about Renee and I didn't know who that was. So there might be other people who ah. don't know who Renee Ritchie is. Also, he is uh, the host of many I More shows. And yes. he is not your husband, as some people no, might think. <laughs> Different person. Every, that's true. A lot of people do think that. Uh, no, he's my best friend, not my husband. Um, and he runs iMore, which is a fabulous website. And I've known him for about forever. And uh, just a great guy that uh, knows a little bit of everything on technology. I, I don't use Google. I use Renewgle. Usually, if I t <laughs> there's a question I don't know. I'll call him up and renewal for the answer. <laughs> and he is, of course, also the host of Mac Break Weekly with Leo uh, yes. on Tuesdays uh, on Twit. Um, and yeah, he's great. Like, you know, if you, he's great at answering questions. Like I've tweeted things at him and he, you know, he's really um, has a lot of knowledge and is very nice about sharing it. So I'm really excited oh, yeah. to talk to him next week. Uh, you guys can uh, post on the Reddit. That's reddit.com slash r slash iOS today. Um, I promised you our phone number if you wanted to uh, leave us a voicemail. And I know I have it here somewhere. Here it is, 757. 504 iPad, uh, and I wanted to also say about the Reddit, if anybody has been following um, what has been going on at Reddit, I don't know if you've been following that, Georgia, 
um, just lots yeah. of chaos because uh, with the, a woman that was very supportive of a lot of the mods and who did the Ask Me Anything um, where people could go, famous people could go on. And she was yeah. super helpful and she was laid off and the mods uh, got really upset. So I wanted to take this moment to thank the mod of our subreddit. Um, it was Kyle D, K-Y-L-D-E. Um, thank you so much. You're, uh, I love what you post and it's amazing to me if any community can uh, just function. And this is a tiny baby community. We, do, we just started it. And, you know, Georgia, you know what it's like to take care of babies. You have to hold them all the yes. time. They're crying, yes. they're pooping, yes. they're, all the things. That's kind of what a baby subreddit is. <laughs> it's, it's wonderful. Yeah, it's like, so uh, I just appreciate everybody who's been um, posting there. Jay Moore 5 and Dana Schwartz and Tech School and everyone else who's uh, posted things. And like I said before, I'm going to post all of our do-it-yourself cases on there. Yes, and other people can post theirs as well, which yes. would be really cool to see for some other ideas and come in and support your uh, new little baby Reddit. <laughs> yeah. uh, so where can people find you, Georgia? Uh, you can find me on imore.com. I write occasionally. You can also find me on Twitter. It's at Georgia underscore Dow. All right. Well, that is it for iOS Today. Thank you so much, Georgia. And hopefully you'll come on uh, Tech News to today, tonight, or um, back on this show if Leo decides to never come back from vacation. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>